So just the other day, Southeast Texas was hit with a massive storm. This storm has knocked out power to over 1 million people, but we also have seen four deaths. However, experts say that the real concern is moving forward. I wanna break down what's going on, why what's happening in Texas is what experts believe is just the start because something is about to happen that many people are not even discussing. So I'll break all that down in just a moment. It's gonna impact every single one of us even though we may not even live near or close to Texas, we will still be impacted. So I'll break all this down in just a moment, but all I ask is one thing, it takes two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates, and now let's begin. So if you don't know what happened in Texas, well, let me just remind you really quick. Look at some of these clips. Southeast Texas raked with winds over 80 miles per hour. That was just part of it, okay? It went through parking lots. It went through, uh, you know, department stores. It even took out windows in some very, very important buildings and some skyscrapers. Look at this one. This is in downtown Houston. The winds were 100 miles per hour as they quickly roared through this major American city. That was just in Texas. Texas is not known for, especially Southeast Texas, getting windstorms or hurricane-like storms like this. That is concerning. But here's one of the big concerns. Look at this. It says some in Houston are facing no power for weeks after storms cause widespread damage, killing at least four. Here's the problem. We are not just having to deal with uh, flooding. We don't just have to deal with you know, windows falling out of buildings or getting ripped out of buildings in some cases, but we now have to deal with businesses and individuals not even having power for potentially weeks. Look at this building, okay? Look at this building. The whole side of this building right here was ripped off. You cannot just go and start putting bricks back in. This building, in many cases, will have to be completely torn down in order to make sure the building is stable. Now, here's the reason why this is not going to go quickly. Some say this could potentially take weeks on its own, if not months. Just look at this. Take a look at this. This is something that we got word of and we put our eyes on it and it's, it's, it's incredible to see. Uh, this power tower is down, it's mangled, just folded up like a piece of paper right there where it broke towards the bottom. That is just a, a tower, okay, that's it. That's just the tower that holds the power lines. Some of these are completely crippled. They have just collapsed and they're mangled. These are not gonna be just pick back up and you put power lines back on them. In most cases, all these are going to be scrapped and more are gonna to have to be sent out and erected. This is a problem. But again, this is not the only problem. Here's something else you may not know. It says another year, another disaster aid gap as funding deadline nears. It says emergency fund expected to run out of cash in August while Congress is out of session. What does this mean? Well, there's some funding. It's called the Federal Emergency Management Agency. This is FEMA. Look at this. As this was posted on February 21st, 2024. It says, for the second year in a row, the Federal uh, Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, their disaster relief fund is facing a summer shortfall smack in the middle of a hurricane and wildfire season says the problem isn't lost on congressional appropriators or the White House, which requested an additional $9 billion for the fund back in October. Still, it's not clear whether the final fiscal 2024 Homeland Security Department spending bill due March 8th will provide a vehicle for more disaster aid money. Here's the thing. Every single year, we see lawmakers come out and they, they pass another bill. They provide additional funding to FEMA and it it gets them through. But here's the issue. Places like, uh, say, Hawaii, where they had a massive fire that it took 
many buildings. It had, uh, I think, billions of dollars in damage. We are 10 months past that or so, and we still haven't seen some people get the money that they need to rebuild their house, whether it's through insurance or FEMA or the state or the federal government. We have no clue. Okay, They are not sending that money out. But what's interesting is when that boat crashed into the, the Baltimore Bridge, okay, the, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which it's, the boat is still there. That ship is still there with like 21 crew member on board, I believe. That boat, the day after, the White House came out and said, no need for an investigation. Like we knew it was an accident. The federal government has this. They're going to pay all the, the costs. The federal, the U.S. government has it. Not insurance companies, the U.S. government. But here's what I think is crazy. That was just one day after. We're again, 10 months past what happened in, in uh, Hawaii, in Maui, and some people still haven't received any money. The federal government is coming out and saying that we are going to back this. So does this storm, is this going to be backed by the federal government? Likely not. Okay, It wasn't that big of a storm, according to experts. But here's who is going to pay for it. Your insurance company. If you live in Texas, if you live in Houston, Texas, or just Southeast Texas, you are going to see an increase to your insurance premiums this year. They say people can afford insurance, and so that's obviously why they buy it. But what happens as more and more of these catastrophes occur is your rates are going to go up. We've seen this in California, where some uh, insurance companies are completely pulling out of the state, will not even uh, insure your homes or your cars. One, because of wildfires. Number two, because of theft. There are some companies that will not insure you because of theft, because of the increased amount of theft in the state. You look at the state of uh, Florida, for example, their insurance rates, their insurance premiums for, for homeowners insurance are through the roof. I talked about this the other day, that many people are going to lose their homes because they cannot afford to pay for insurance. We are expecting, and as of right now, the average homeowner's insurance in the state of Florida is about $8,000, I believe. But over the next six to you know, eight months, experts predict that that will increase to a little bit over $11,000 for the year in your premium. That means almost $1,000 a month is going to go for insurance on your home, and that is it, because of flooding and hurricanes. That's the reason why. So the concern right now, number one, is FEMA going to have the money to pay for all these upcoming wildfires and hurricanes? And number two, are you even going to have insurance on your home or your vehicle pretty soon? Because based off what we're seeing, based off all the catastrophes that are going on, based off of the, the thefts and the, the violence, many people are not going to have insurance. So all the stuff we own is actually going to be put at risk every single day. So just wanted to share this with you. You know, it's, it's troubling what we continue to see. But at the same time, these are natural disasters that are happening as we speak. And the problem is well, there's nothing we can do about it. So as soon as I get more information on all of this, I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates. But that is what we know as of today. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.